The Conscience, the Activities of the Spirit An intellectual acknowledgement of God's existence, a mystical faith based on emotional experience and or a determination to believe through strength of will, do not resolve the inner conflicts and problems deep within man. Attempts at faith such as these are a clear indication that the individual has not yet met with God and therefore has not yet found the fundamental solution. It is through the conscience that we can know we have spiritual contact with God. The conscience is different from the personality or the heart. When I try to do something wrong, my conscience acts as a prosecutor that accuses, judges, and condemns my action. Such activities of the conscience are the work of the spirit within man. Therefore, even though you may have faith such as mentioned above, based on intellectual knowledge, emotions, or volition, you still will not be able to enjoy true peace in your heart. In order to be able to worship God who is spirit, the spirit of the individual needs to receive and be liberated by the light of God's truth. The problem is that man's spirit has become contaminated by sin and, as a result, is dead. This is the greatest and most lamentable problem facing mankind. In Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 it says, And you were dead in trespasses and sins. This is a reference to the state of the spirit, which is dead, having become contaminated by sin. When the conscience of the individual is troubled because of his defiled spirit, it is an indication of the contention between that person and God. The moment Adam ate from the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, his spirit died. Adam's conscience began to trouble him as shame, conflict, and uneasiness arose within him. It was to conceal their troubled consciences that Adam and Eve sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. This action symbolizes religion. When Adam heard God's voice, however, he confessed that he was naked even though he was wearing the covering he had made. See Genesis chapter 3 verses 8 through 10. Religion is man's efforts to conceal his troubled conscience but these efforts are of no avail when exposed before the voice of God, and they cannot cover man's naked shame. If man is to serve God, his spirit must be made alive, and he must be rid of the anguish in his conscience. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 22, it says, Since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit in sincere love of the brethren. And in verse 23, it says, having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible, through the word of God which lives and abides forever. In other words, our spirits need to be washed clean through obedience to the truth. This is what it means to be born again through the word of God. In John's Gospel, chapter 17, verse 17, it says, Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. The Spirit is sanctified or cleansed through the Word of Truth. This is what is meant by being born again. It is only by being born again in this way that our conscience can have a taste of freedom. Pangs of conscience are an indication of a defiled spirit. When the conscience is troubled, it is because the Spirit is fettered by the chains of sin. Nevertheless, when the light of the truth shines through, the chains of sin are broken and the filth of the Spirit is cleansed. Salvation, or being born again, is a matter of the conscience being set free from the chains of sin. There is also an antitype which now saves us, baptism, not the removal of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 21. Only a good conscience will go in search of God and wish to approach Him. It is only with the clear conscience that we can meet with God. The flood at the time of Noah is a foreshadowing of salvation. Let's consider the waters of that flood. Noah's ark floated on the surface of the waters, and thus the eight members of Noah's family were saved. The significance of baptism by full immersion is also revealed here. 
baptism does not signify the removal of dirt from the flesh. It represents the cleansing process that has taken place in the spirit. It signifies that the conscience has been made clean, baptism not of the flesh, but of the spirit. True baptism takes place when the spirit is cleansed and the conscience is clear, having been freed from sin. It is in such a state that the spirit is able to worship and serve God. Magnificent ceremonies and sanctuaries, pious attitudes and postures, unnatural gestures and grandiose religious rites may present a certain physical purity, but such purity of the flesh does not make it possible for us to approach God. It is only with an undefiled spirit and a clear conscience that we can come close to God. No matter how pure a person's actions may be, if he has not been saved, his spirit, that is to say his conscience, remains defiled. This is because man is not able to behave in such a way that everything he does is perfect. Since man is unable to purify his conscience through his actions, God gave the gospel to the world, the gospel which purifies through the truth. This truth is not a law of actions, but the law of grace. Such is the gospel of the truth. Having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word of God which lives and abides forever, because all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of the grass. The grass withers, and its flower falls away, but the word of the Lord endures forever. Now this is the word which by the gospel was preached to you. 1 Peter chapter 1 verses 23-25 when the words of the gospel penetrate the spirit, that is, the conscience of the individual, and that person comes to realize the truth, he or she is able to serve God. In Hebrews chapter 9, verse 9, it says that the arrangement of temple worship in accordance with the law of Moses is symbolic for the present time, and the gifts and sacrifices offered according to that arrangement cannot perfect the conscience of the worshiper. In other words, the offering of a goat or a sheep in the temple according to the sacrificial laws of Old Testament times is but a metaphor and cannot perfect the conscience. Therefore, the true sacrifice must be offered. Jesus Christ is this true sacrifice, which is able to perfect the conscience. When a person comes to believe in him, his or her conscience is made perfect. Dear Reader, can you claim with confidence that your conscience is completely clear with not the slightest speck of dirt or spot of cloud defiling it? Isn't your conscience at conflict with God? Is your conscience not troubling you in the slightest? You cannot stand before God until your conscience is totally clear. If your conscience is not clear, it means sin is forming a barrier between your spirit and God who is spirit. This means there is no light in your spirit. Your spirit is lost, wandering in the darkness on this side of death. It has not yet tasted the resurrection on the other side. That is to say, you have not yet been born anew. The liberation of the conscience is what is meant by being born anew or born again. This is the salvation of the spirit. In 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 9 it says, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The salvation of the soul, or more precisely the spirit, is the liberation of the conscience. This is accomplished the moment a person comes to realize the truth. Therefore, Jesus said in John chapter 8, verse 32, And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Have you come to a realization of the truth and found peace in your conscience? Has your conscience been liberated from the pangs caused by disobedience to the truth? In John's Gospel we read, In him was life, and the life was the light of men. That was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. John chapter 1 verses 4 and 9 the truth is not something that enlightens a person's reasoning. It is a revelation that enlightens the spirit and sets the conscience free. The truth is revealed to man, thus releasing the spirit from its chains.